All right, what's up there, YouTube? Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this new Panasonic S1 and S1R that was just announced. Um, obviously, to me, for me, a shooter that shoots half 50% video and 50% photos, the S1 is probably a better choice. And the reason why is it seems to be better for video. Um, the price, it's more expensive than the Nikons and more expensive than a lot of the other cameras that are uh, frankly out that have very similar specs to this. Uh, it, ha it does excel in a couple areas. They're gonna be adding 422 10-bit internally on this camera. Um, it has the two memory card slots. So you have the SD and uh, uh, XQD card slot. It also has the XQD card is also going to be upgradable to the CFast Express, the CF Express card, CFast. I keep saying CFast and CFast Express. It's CF Express. Anyway, which is much faster and should allow, maybe that's when they're going to add the other feature. Um, there's no time limit in 4K 30p. There is a 30, I think there's a 30 minute time limit in 4K 60. It shoots 4K 60p. Um, and in the high speed mode, I guess that's 1080, uh, 180p or something like that. It's got like 180p. There's like a 15 minute limit or 10 minute limit, which is fine. There, you're, you're not going to be shooting for extended periods in 180p. I mean, nobody will. Nobody would. So let's let's talk real quick about who this camera's for. And if it's a camera that I think I would buy, this is my opinion on, I think I would buy this camera. Yes, I would probably buy this camera. I've always been a big fan of Panasonic cameras. I have a little G85 here, although I would like to see the G90. Um, I would like to see a, a small little camera like this. This this new S1 and S1R is a big camera. They're big cameras. They're, they're the size of a D850, really. They're bigger than the Z6 and Z7. They're bigger, uh, much bigger than the Sony's. They're right up there with the EOS R. Their weight is right, right even with a D850 on the weight on this thing. Um, they, they were smart, which is great. They added the battery grip. They have a battery grip with buttons that's coming for it. And a control on the, uh, a contact on the bottom of the camera that allows for the typical battery grips of the Panasonic cameras. How much is the battery grip gonna cost? Probably three or 400 bucks. That's the way Panasonic does. Anyway, I'm sure once they have some, there'll be aftermarket ones that come out too, just like they did for the GH5 and the GH4 and the GH3. And even for this little G85, there's a battery grip for this thing. It's like 40 bucks. It's like 40, you can buy a battery grip for this and it has the same plug on the bottom. Let me open this up real quick so you can see. I'll show you what I'm talking about. On the bottom, there's a there's a contact point plate off. I'm taking the plate off of the bottom of this thing. Somebody somebody commented on my video that I made about Tony and Chelsea um, being wrong about a couple things and they said that the white balance was all over the place on my camera. I. I didn't see, I mean, there was a couple color shift spots, but it was because the clouds went over the, I've got a window here, it's not constant lighting, and I've got a, a screen here in front of me, uh, the monitor, and the light changes, like things were on the screen, ad popped up, and might have changed something, or the clouds went in front of the window. Anyway, might have changed something, but the white balance pretty much stayed the same. My shirt was green the entire time. I don't know what this guy was talking about. Anyway. On the bottom of the camera, there's a, here, I'll put this up here, get my face out of it. See, there's a little, right there, there's a connection for the battery grip. So the, it mimics the buttons on the back of the camera. So the buttons on the back get mimicked on the grip, which is something Nikon definitely should have done with their Z6. I don't know why they didn't add this little piece. It's rubber, cut. Co it's covered, add a little connection for the, for a battery grip on the Z6 and Z7. You know, I for all the for all the positives for the camera, I did, there are faults and I I I'm not afraid to say I wish they had done these things. I wish they had like the S1 and S1R a spot for the battery grip. It makes no sense to have a camera that's 
aimed at professionals, it's 2,500 bucks. That's not a consumer camera. You don't go to Best Buy. Most people don't go to Best Buy looking for the $2,500 body only camera. They just don't. But um, to add the battery grip with buttons on the grip so that it's easy to flip over the side and shoot your pictures with the, with the buttons on it. Makes sense. Um, hopefully, hopefully soon, uh, Nikon come out with at least a battery grip to add batteries because for me that's the most important thing I never I never use the buttons on my grips I've got grips for the for my other Nikon cameras I got battery grips for the GH series cameras I've always had battery grips all I use them for, when I turn the camera sideways I, I've mentioned this before I still do it this way even with the grip on the side I'm just I'm old school I just don't flip the camera and use the buttons on the grip when I'm shooting vertically. I just, I'm, I've already got the camera in my hand like this. I just flip it real quick and take a picture. I don't move my hand, you know, even though I have the grip, I don't move my hand to the side. I use the grip to add more juice for more battery power. I care more about battery power because I shoot a lot of video. As you can see, you see that I'm always shooting video. So I shoot a lot of video. So that's what I use the thing, the battery grip for, so I can hot swap the batteries. What on my Nikon's, what they do is, it uses the internal battery until it gets until that battery goes dead. Then it uses the battery in the grip. Well, Nikon's problem is the problem that I had with my with I have with all my Nikon's. I haven't gotten a grip for this one yet, but the problem I've had with it is when recording video, when it switches from internal to external battery, it'll stop recording on the camera or it'll have a glitch. It'll mess it up. So what I do is I watch the screen on the back and when it starts flashing red, I stop the camera, pull the battery out, restart, because it, it goes from grip, it has an option on the Nikon cameras, Nikon cameras to make the, the grip battery the, the predominant battery. And then it, what it will do is it'll use up the grip battery and then go to the internal battery. So what I do is I stop the camera, pull the battery out real quick, restart the camera, continue shooting, take the little tray out, swap the battery out, put in a freshly charged battery, stick that battery on the charger, and then pop it back in and it continues using the one in the grip and I have to stop pop the camp back in restart recording and now I've got now I can basically do continuous shooting in relay but it's a it's a big workaround it would be so much nicer just to have the grip you know automatically switch the batteries without messing up the video back to this there seems to be a button on the back of the camera like a Q menu button which is similar to the I menu on the on the Nikon that brings up a bunch of stuff that you can touch on the screen. The screen flips to the side, it flips up and down like that and sideways. So it's like, it, that is a that is a bonus. It doesn't flip all the way around. Now I don't know why they didn't put a, a flippy screen all the way around. I think part of this, they're, they're going for the professional market. My idea, what, what I think is the reason why camera manufacturers are hesitant to put on a, a screen that flips all the way around on their higher end cameras. Okay, you look at the higher end cameras, D, D5, right? D4, D4S, those didn't even have a, the screen didn't flip at all. Um, the D850, the screen just flips out, up and down, right? Then you go to Nikon's lower end cameras, their 3500s and their, their other smaller cameras, they have a screen that flips all the way around. Right? So their consumer cameras have this that flip all the way around. Their professional cameras have just the tilty screen. And I think Sony was thinking the same thing. We want our camera to look professional. So we're gonna put the screen that flips, not the one that flips all the way around because people associate that with a consumer camera, right? Canon, even Canon, when they come out with the camera that, yeah, they had the OSR with the flip screen that flipped all the way around, but that's rare. Most camera manufacturers don't do that on their professional versions of the cameras. They use the, they use just the tiltable screen. And so I think Panasonic trying to aim this S1 and S1R more at professionals rather than consumers. Their consumers are going to buy the, the G85, the G90. They're going to buy the, the small mirrorless they're still making these they said they're still going to be making the gh series so 
though by the consumer oriented cameras with the flip screen the gh5 gh i mean gh5 isn't it's it's a mix consumer and professional but you can get it for under two grand you can get a gh4 for like 800 bucks now 900 dollars, and that's a phenomenal camera there's um I watch Everyday Everyday Dad or something. This um, one of other YouTuber that um, does vlogging stuff, and he likes the flip screen. And he just recently did a video about the GH4 and is it a good buy today? And it still it still shoots 4K 30p. It's still a fantastic camera. It has a flip screen, flips all the way around. I don't know. I think I honestly think the reason why they don't put the flip they didn't put the flip screen is they didn't want people to associate the cameras with the consumer versions of the cameras. What's funny is on the Nikon they have one card slot, no battery grip, two things that and and the and the dummy dial on top with the mode selection instead of the you know the buttons like on the professional versions of the camera. They didn't have the round eye cup like the professional versions of their cameras so they have all these other consumer things but then they didn't put on a flip screen because they didn't want it to look consumer i don't know i don't understand nikon's ideas here i didn't understand their thing now this s1r and s1 have a round eye cup and according to them they have the the world's lvf they're calling it lvf it's live viewfinder because they're saying that the resolution is so much higher. It's like three, it's 5.7 million dots or something. When on the Nikon, it's 3 million and something or 4 million. So this is like a million more dots. It's like even more clear, supposedly, even more clear. But the thing about the Nikon viewfinder is the optics are so good in this viewfinder, it's unbelievable to look through the viewfinder. It looks like I'm looking through a real, through an. it almost looks like an optical viewfinder. It's that good. It doesn't jitter or stutter or have any motion blur when you're moving it fastly it works really really well it's a fantastic viewfinder the dials and all the buttons and stuff look fantastic on this on this panasonic what i will probably do is rent the camera when they when they come out i'll rent it and try it out and compare it to the z6 and see you know how does it compare is it worth the extra money i think it would probably be worth the extra money if i didn't already own a z6 and if i didn't already have nikon glass that i could just adapt right over if i wasn't already shooting nikon if i stuck with panasonic and i used it mostly for video i would be i would be really interested in that in that camera to replace the nikons for photos i'd be like well how good is the photos in it how good is because for me the nikons were always better at photos that's why I kept the Nikons I use the Nikons for photography and the Panasonic's for video and I was excited as I told you here on the channel I was excited that Nikon came out with a camera that was mirrorless that could basically replace that would meld the two cameras together great video and great photo because I wanted the photo from the Nikon but the video from the Panasonic so I basically got both with the Z6 the video, much higher quality, and the photos are still fantastic like Nikon photos. We'll see. Anyway, what do you guys think about this um, S1 and S1R? Are you, you know, interested in it? Is it? Do they look like cameras you would want to buy? Which one would you get? Would you get the S1 or the S1R? For me, I think the S1 would be a better choice for me. If I was going to pick one camera, it would have to be the S1 over the S1R. I would like to have the higher megapixels, but I couldn't see me getting, I'm not leaning as much towards photography as I am towards video. The S1 seems like a good meld between the two, just like the Z6 seems like a good meld between the two. It's better at video than the Z7. It's not as, as high resolution as the Z7, but it's really great as photos. So it's like in between. So what do you guys think? Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of this new Panasonic S1 and S1R. I know I'm not giving you any real new information. There's reviews and all kinds of B&H ads. I clicked on Jared Poland's video to watch his video about the S1R and S1. And uh, I didn't realize, I thought it had started, but it was actually the B&H video that where, where they're sitting there holding the camera, talking about it, about the same camera. And I was like, what's, I guess Jared's at B&H. I wasn't paying any attention and I ran through the entire ad. Then his video started playing. I thought, oh, that was an ad. It was a long, it's, if you've seen these videos on YouTube, you've probably seen this long 
this very long B and H ad for the S1 S1R, and it looks like it's got a guy playing the piano and stuff. I thought it was the I thought it was the review thing. I thought it was that. So they tricked me. They got me good. I sat through the whole thing, <laughs> thinking it was that. So anyway, holler below. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, talk at you later. See ya.